sanctuary. Can we bless his name? We worship. of God in Christ. I don't believe I have a witness, but the Bible says that when praises go up, blessings come down.
Come on, say that you are. You are my strength. Yes, Lord. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Reach yes to me. You are my strength. You are my strength. In times of weakness, he reaches. weakness history is made perfect and it reaches to me reaches to me in the fullness in the fullness of your grace in the power of your name that name he lifts you lift me up hallelujah you lift Let's say it again. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Let's bless the Lord today. I ask that you would join me in lifting up prayers for God's people everywhere. There's a praise in this house. And God, we recognize that there is a praise in the mouths of your people. There's a praise in the mouths of your people all over this world. We pray that you would continue to build the fire that you are placing in the hearts of your people. We pray that you would give your people boldness to proclaim your praise, to let the world know who you are and what you have done. We pray that you would bind us together because we know that praises across all of the continents are going up to your name. We know that there are hearts all over this world filled with praises that you are ready to inhabit. God, we thank you for giving us your spirit. Your word tells us that those led by your spirit are the children of God. So we pray that all over this world, no matter what country, no matter what climate, no matter what language, that you would open our hearts, open our minds, open our mouths, so that we put forth what you want to say in this earth. Lord, we recognize that your presence is with your people. We recognize that you loved, that you sacrificed, that you sent your son to die. And you have your people in place to spread that gospel, to spread that message, to give hope to those who do not have hope. We pray that as the body of Christ, that you would guide us to work together, to be in unity as your son prayed for us to be. We pray that we would raise up our praises along with the praises of those who are in places across the world. We pray that we would all be led by your spirit so that we would all be saying what you would have us to say, that we would all be singing what you would have us to sing, that we would all be living what you would have us to live. We lift up those who are far away and those who are near. We lift up those who are living in peace and those who are living in peril. We lift up those who have plenty and those who have lack. For we know that in the midst of all of these things that you are watching, that you are present, that you are giving your power, that you are giving your love, that you are making sure that your children are in place to carry out your will. So we pray for those we know and those we do not know. And we thank you for the blessings that you are giving to and through your people all over this world. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you right now, Lord. We just praise and magnify your name right now, Lord Jesus. Glory to your name right now, Lord. We thank you. We lift you up, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, just touch your people right now. Touch your first responders right now. From the top of their head to the soles of their feet, Lord. Touch them right now. Encourage them. Strengthen them right now. That they may do the work that you're calling for them to do right now, Lord Jesus. Bless them, Lord. Encourage them. Give them the hope and the strength and the knowledge to do what you have set forth for them to do, Lord. Protect the military right now, no matter where they may be. Glory to God. Touch them right now, Lord. Protect them, Lord. Let no hurt, harm, or danger come upon them right now, Lord. We just thank you. We thank you. We know it's already done. Bless their families, Lord. Glory, we pray. Glory right now, Lord, we thank you. Thank you. Bless this nation, Lord. Bless the leaders and the leadership, Lord that they'll come together as one and acknowledge you as being the only right God and Savior of us all. Glory to God right now. Bless all of those in the region right now, Lord. 
those that have needs, Lord, those that may not have a home, those that may not have food, whatever the need is, we don't know, Lord, but you are the source of everything. We just praise and magnify you right now. Glory, we thank you, because you are God, our Savior, all that we need, and we just praise and magnify you. Glory to your name. Bless your people right now, Lord, and we give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you, God, for your many blessings that you bestowed upon us. Thank you, God, because you smiled on us one more time. You touched us with the finger of love. You woke us up this morning, God. God, it was nobody but you. And we're going to say thank you for what you've done. But God, we come to ask you now to look on the pastor of this church, the bishop of this jurisdiction. Father, we're asking you now, God, to continue to bless him and continue to strengthen, continue to encourage his heart. Father, because you have looked out for him. You've done for him what no other could do. You made ways for him that no man could make. Even though the doctors, God, that worked with him and for him, God, they could only do what you gave them knowledge to do. But it was your hand, God, that touched. It was your hand that delivered. It was your hand that healed. It was your hand that set free. We thank you right now for how you blessed him, God. Thank you for how you made ways for him. You provided, but not just him, God, but pastors everywhere. Everywhere, God, they need you. Everywhere, God, they need your guidance. We're asking you to lead them, guide them, God, that they may be able to lead your people in the name of Jesus, not just for the pastors, but for saints everywhere, Christians everywhere in this land and other lands where they may not be able to serve, they may not be able to call out your name, but God, we're asking you to bless them, strengthen them, encourage them in the name of Jesus. For you are God. Beside you, there are none other. You are the creator of heaven and earth and the fullness therein. God, you created us in your image. We want to say thank you for what you have done. We ask you to look on your people. Bless the ministries around the world that people may hear of the good news that your son died and rose again, now sits at your right hand, that they may have a chance to be saved, filled with your precious love. We say thank you now. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, put your hands together. For the Lord is good. <laughs> and his mercy endured forever. Come on, everybody say bless. 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 Come on, say it. Everybody say bless. 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 We're blessed. Bless. Bless. Say bless. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed. We're blessed when we come. We're blessed in the sea. We're blessed. We're blessed. 
Let's give God some more praise. <laughs> Truly, he is a good God on today. He's worthy to be praised. He gave us life, health, and strength on today. He woke us up on this morning. I think we can lift our voice and give him glory. I think we can be, get a little louder than that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy, God. Father, we just thank you today. Thank you for another time and another opportunity. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for giving us another chance. And God, we praise you in your sanctuary. We lift our hands and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. Man, I do give honor to God. I do give honor to our pastor, Bishop Eigerhart. I give honor to the clergy and all the people of God. I do give honor to my own wife, Sister Nadia Chandler Hardy. Amen. Amen. And just everybody in the building. Amen. Everybody that could be watching. Amen. We thank God for you. 
And then we get right to the word on today. We'll be coming from Genesis chapter 18, verses 14. And this has been a, a long week. I mean, we had a, a great meeting. Amen. Our bishop um, invited the presiding bishop of the Churches of God in Christ, Bishop J. Drew Sheard. Amen. And this was his technically his first stop, amen, to a jurisdiction. And yours truly, our bishop, the bishop of the Texas Southwest jurisdiction, invited the presiding bishop, amen. And that is an honorable, honorable thing. And we know that we serve a great leader, amen, who is our pastor, who is a visionary, amen. Some would say that he knew that, that it would take place like that, but he didn't he didn't admit, admit to it, so we're just going to assume. <laughs> Amen. But Genesis chapter 18, verse 14, and it reads, it's a short verse. I want to start a little earlier, so I'm going to go up a little bit, and I'm going to skip down to the 14th verse, but I'm going to start at the first verse. It says, and the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the, of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself to the ground and said, my Lord, if now I have found favor, in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. Skip it down to verse 6. And Abraham hastened into the tent unto Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes upon the earth. And Abraham ran unto the herd and fetched a calf tender and good and gave it unto a young man, and he hasted to dress, dress it. And he took butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed and set it before them, and he stood by them under, under the tree, and they did eat. Skipping down to verse 14. Pardon me, I'm going to go to verse 12. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I, I am waxed old, I have, I shall, old shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also. And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child which am old? And the question today, is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Amen. My topic on today is when God asks, asks a question. When God asks a question. Now, questions are important to learning and understanding. Webster describes a question as an inter interrogative expression often used to test knowledge. Amen. It's often said sometimes by the instructor, there is no such thing as a bad question. Amen. The questions are good to ask, and, and questions are ways to get information and when somebody may be withholding something. Amen, a question is a way to, to learn further without assuming. Amen, a good question requires thought and creativity or comes from a place for a need of clarity. The Winans had a song years ago called The Question Is. Amen, and some may be too young to remember that and it may be a time that you were in the world, but 50 Cent had a song called 21 Questions. Amen. And thank God that the saints of God, we should stay away from those type of things. So we'll stick with the whinings on today. 
And Marvin Winans, he led the song, and he says, the question is, will I ever leave you? And the answer is no. No, 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 no. Then he says, the question is, will I do his will? And the answer is, yes, 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 yes. And the question is, when will Jesus return? And he said, soon, soon, soon. Amen. So those are the questions that he, he asked, and that was even one of my favorite songs at that time. But amen, as we talk about Abraham on today, that God called Abraham from a heathen nation. He was a, in a family of, of idol makers. And God spoke to him and said, I'm going to make thee a great nation. Leave your kin kindred behind. And I'm going to show you great and mighty things. And Abraham obeyed God. And, it, and the Bible says that it was accounted unto him for righteousness. And as, God, as Abraham began to believe God and trust God, God began to prove himself to Abraham. He began to work miracles in Abraham's life. And it, he showed it by, when, by allowing Abraham to gain wealth. He allowed Abraham, who was Abram at the time, to defeat kings. Amen. Abram was tremendously blessed, but he had a, a particular issue, amen, that he could not, he didn't have any children. And the Bible says that he had a nephew named Lot that probably could have been his heir, but then he also had a servant named Eli Eleazar, amen, that that was the only heir that he had, but he didn't have an heir of his own. Now, he had a promise, but no heir, amen. But how many know that you, we don't have to look at the supernatural things that when we have a promise from God that we can stand on it? Amen. I may not have a lot of money in the bank, but I have a promise of God that he would supply every one of my needs. Amen. I had, may not have, amen, the credit that I need to get the house, but God has promised me that he would give me a house. Amen. So I don't need the credit. I don't even need the down payment. I can just go in with the promise of God. Now, I know that there may be some naysayers about that, but we are talking about faith on today. Amen. We're not talking about something in the natural, but we're talking about the supernatural belief in God that God is able to do anything. Amen. That was the question that he asked Sarah. Amen. Is, that, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Amen. It's, I'm not talking about your brother and your sister. I'm not even talking about your mama or your daddy, but I'm talking about the Lord. Amen. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Amen. The righteous run in. Amen. He says, is anything too hard for the Lord? It just wasn't the Lord, but it deals with the name Yahweh. Amen. The self-existed one. Amen. The one that created heaven and earth. And amen. amen. The one that spoke the world into existence. Amen. So it's nothing too hard for him. But Abraham, or Abram at the time, he didn't have a seed. But God gave him a promise. Amen. Let's look at what God had promised him. The Bible says that God let Abr Abram know that he and Sarah would have a son. According to Genesis chapter 17, verses 5 through 7, he says, Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be called Abraham. For a father of, na of many nations have I made thee, and I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of, out of thee, and I will establish my covenant between me and thy seed after, after thee and their generations for an everlasting covenant, oh to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. You have to understand, if you have, we have to go back a little bit that, amen, uh, God had made the promise, but nothing was happening. So Abraham's wife got involved and she said, you know, we're going to help God out. I'm paraphrasing, but that, that's exactly what she did. And she gave Ab Abram her handmaiden that, that they could uh, help uh, fulfill God's promises. But how many know that we don't, God doesn't need our help to fulfill his promises? 
Amen. God intentionally makes things a little difficult. He intentionally will do things that he will get the glory. Amen. As you see, as we think about when Lazarus was dead, and the Bible says that he loved Lazarus and he loved Mary and Martha. Amen. And he got the news, and, and normally he would have went there right away, but he, he, God had him to wait just a few, maybe three or four days. Amen. Because he had to wait that Lazarus would die. Because if he would have came too early, they would have said it was a coincidence, and, and, and Lazarus just happened to wake up. But since he was in the grave, they knew that for sure that, that he had to be dead and that God would get the glory as Jesus caused for Lazarus. Amen. Amen. So God will make, a look, make it difficult so he can get all the glory. And he made sure that Sarah was not able to bear children. And though Abraham bore, was able to produce Ishmael and he was satisfied with Ishmael. But if we look over in the New Testament, that Ishmael, Ishmael was not the promise of faith, but he, was, he came forth from the flesh. Amen. There is a difference between the flesh and the spirit. And God wants us to be in the spirit and to walk in the spirit. Amen. So the Bible says that, that, that the three men came down unto Abram. Amen. And, and what I see in this text is that what Abraham did is that we must be hospitable. Amen. When they came and, and Abram recognized that these wasn't just any three regular gentlemen. And he was not, it wasn't about their status and how great they were that the Bible says that he was at the tent just in case any stranger comes up, he can, he can bring some water out to him and bring some food and show hospitality. Amen. And the Bible gives us warning that, that we should be careful how, to, how we entertain strangers. Because the Bible says that some have enter, entertained angels unaware. Amen. We can't be selective in how we treat people and, and who we're going to be nice to and, and who we're going to speak to and who's worthy of the love of God. Amen. Because God loved us when, when we didn't even love ourselves. Amen. So we should give that same um, ability to give that same expression to anybody. Anybody can come to Jesus. Amen. No matter what their past is, they have a right to the tree of life if they believe on the one that God has sent. So we must show hospitality. So Abraham knew how to entertain God. He knew how to welcome God in. Amen. He knew how to, to show hospitality and, and he cooked, he had uh, Sarah cook for him and he had them his servant to prepare a calf for these strangers that came on in. But the strangers were not necessarily strangers. They knew who Abraham was. And the Bible tells us that, he, that the reason why it shows proof that he knew who Abraham was is he raises the question, where is your wife Sarah? And he said she's right there in the tent. Amen. And, and see, God had previously, God had spoke to Abraham that he would you give Sarah a son, amen, and, and he laughed, amen. We know that Sarah laughed, but he laughed also, but God didn't charge that to his account, amen. But not only, he, he laughed, but he did believe God, as the Bible says, it was accounted to him for righteousness. And he believed God so that he, he exercised the sign of the covenant, which was circumcision. So he took everybody under his, under his roof, and he circumcised every male child and and man, and even circumcised himself. That's how much he believed God. Amen. And one thing, the next thing is that when we have faith, we need to connect our faith with other people. Amen. Not only should we be, should we be hospitable, we should, but we should connect our faith. Amen. It wasn't enough for Abraham to have faith. His wife had to connect with that faith. Amen. Because she would have to have strength to bear that, to bear that son. Amen, because she was 90 years old at the time, and it was, it was the end of, of childbearing at that time, and even in her young age, she couldn't have children. Amen, but God was working a miracle in the midst of that. Amen, God gave his promise in the midst of difficulty. God gave his promise in the midst of what, what, what some would seem to be impossible. Amen, but Sarah, as the Bible says that over in Hebrews, that by faith, Sarah was able to gain strength to bear Isaac. 
Amen. So we must connect our faith with other, other people. Amen. That's why we come to church. Amen. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 18, verses, verse 19, it says, Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth right. as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them. When God saw the faith of the friends of the paralytic man, he looked up and he says, Thou faith hath made thee whole. Amen. Because it was four men that connected with a man that couldn't walk. But they, they decided that if we can just get to Jesus, that our friend will be able to walk. Amen. And I'm so glad that God sees faith. Amen. When we work together, it, it makes everything a little better. Amen. A horse is able to pull a certain weight. But if you get a team of horses together, that individual weight that they were able to pull seems like it could increase. For instance, if each horse can pull um, essentially 10 pounds, I mean, if you had six horses, you would think that 60 pounds could be pulled, but somewhere they're able to maybe pull 100 or 200 pounds. I mean, that's the power of coming together. That's the power of connecting your faith with others. Amen. And my third point and final point is that human frailties would not deny the promise of God. Amen. Our uh, inability to achieve certain things will not deny the promises of God. Now, sometimes God will give a promise, and it can be bilateral and unilateral. Amen. Meaning, God will make a promise, and he said, if you do this, then I will do this. But sometimes he makes a promise that I'm going to do this, and it don't matter what you do or don't do, it's going to come to pass. And this particular promise was a unilateral promise. Amen. Don't get it twisted. Abraham loved God and he obeyed God and he walked righteously before God. But even if he made a mistake and even if, if he stumbled, the promise was going to stand sure. I'm so glad today that, that the promise of God is given to us that even if we, we go off the rail and, and we sin and do things, so certain things, that the promise of God will still stand true. But we need to repent unto God and walk as, at walk as God has called us to walk. But he does not negate the promise. He does not nullify the promise. Amen. God sees and knows what's on the inside. And the Bible says that Sarah laughed, but she laughed within herself. And they recognized and the, 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 they said, God said, you know, she laughed. Sarah laughed. She was like, no, I didn't laugh. <laughs> She was afraid that God would, would punish her and do something to her. But he said, you did laugh. But I like it that God did not, he could have killed her. Amen. Because her laughing represented her doubting God. Amen. But, but God sees um, what's in our hearts. And he, he knows, you know, we can put on an air, but he knows what's really going on in our hearts and minds. He knows how we really feel about something. He knows that we have faith or if we really believe, in it, believe him or if we don't believe him. Amen. It reminds me of a song by Chris Tumbling. And he says, the song says, you are amazing, God. He says, indescribable, uncontainable. You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. He says, incomparable, unchangeable. But then I like the part he says, you see the depths of my heart and you love me the same. Amen. You don't have to hide who you really are. You, have, you don't have to hide your shortcomings because God knows your shortcomings. He knows what, 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 where you've fallen short. Amen. There's no need of hiding, but allow God to, to heal those broken places. Amen. Because he gonna, he's going to love you the same. Amen. He's not going to flip out on you when you make a mistake, but he's going to love you through it. And I want you to know tonight as I close, I want you to know today as I close, amen, when God asks a question, amen, every now and then God will ask the question, and he asks the question on today, is anything too hard for God? Amen, it, re it reminds me of a question that Jesus asked his disciples, amen, he says, who do men say that I am? Amen, he says, some say that you're, you're, you're Elijah, and some say you're Jeremiah, and he says, but I want to know, who do you say that I am? Amen. God asked a question because he wants to know where we really are. Amen. It's like checking the temperature. Amen. Where is your faith? Do you believe that I'm able to do anything? 
Can you trust me to do anything? Amen. When the Son of Man shall return, shall he find faith on the earth? Amen. He said, I'm coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle or, or no blemishes. Amen. Are you ready for his return on today? Amen. Do you believe what God has said? Do you believe that God can do anything? I believe that God can do anything but fail. Is there anything too hard for God? What are you believing in God for? Amen. I got the news this week, amen, that I'm accepted as a chaplain in the Army Reserve. Amen. It's been a long process. Amen. But God allowed it to happen. And the enemy tried to come in. Amen. This last couple of weeks have been pretty hard. Amen. Um, I would, they told me that I was going to get the news this Friday. And um, Thursday, um, I got an email, and it said, you have not been, you are not selected as a chaplain. And the reason, and it gave a reason, and I was devastated. As, as so many thoughts ran to my mind, and I thought about some plan Bs or whatever, but something prompted me to go back and look at that email. And man, it was for a, a job that I just willy-nilly applied for. And man, if I got it or didn't get it, it wouldn't go matter. If I got it, I probably was going to turn it down. But I just applied for it. And that was that job. But the next day, I, got, I was here at the church, and, they, and my recruiter called me. He said, how's your day going so far? I said, it's going pretty good. He said, well, it's about to get better. Because you've been selected. Is anything too hard for God? I want you to know in some ways I wasn't qualified. If, if you know about the military, I had to get a waiver for some things that I've done in the past. But get God shined on me. And I thank God and I know that I can answer that question on the day that nothing is too hard for God. Nothing is too hard for God. He can do anything if you just believe. Tell them, say, we are Praise Cathedral, Church of God in Christ. I don't believe I have a witness, but the Bible says that when praises go up, blessings come down.
not there. It's still there. And it's still active. But God is able. Amen. You may have a special need in your life. You may have pain in your body. If you do, I'm going to ask you to put your hand where it hurts. And we're going to trust God. All I can tell you right now is God has been good to us. I'm going to say it again. God has been good to us. Some of us in here know of someone that has passed away from COVID. I have a nephew that has passed away from COVID. There's a lot of people that has passed away. But I want to tell you that God has been good to us. So we here right now, we want to say, Father, we thank you. We thank you. As we stand here, God, we, we are calling on you right now to meet the needs. As some stand here for others, some stand here for themselves. But God, we know that you are God. There's nothing too hard for you. The preacher said, is there anything too hard for God? God, I'm a witness that there's nothing too hard for you. We asking you now, God, to touch each and every one right now. Wherever they may have pain, wherever they may have discomfort, whatever the case may be. God, you know what it is. Because you made us, you made the body. You know how it should function. And we ask you now, God, touch right now. In the name of Jesus. God, where there may be high blood pressure, we ask you to regulate it right now. In the name of Jesus. Whatever heart problems, God, you can fix it. You are God. You are in control. Yes, God, we go to the doctor, but God, he can only do what you allow him to do. But we know that you can go to the other ends of the world. You can go to the other ends of life, to where man cannot go. You can fix what man cannot fix. We're asking you now, God, to meet the needs of each and every one that's here, those that are not here around the world. We're asking you now, God, to touch right now and deliver and set free. Somebody need to be saved. Somebody need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Somebody need to repent, God. We asking you now, touch hearts right now in the name of Jesus. God, we ask you now to look on the leaders of this country and save, set free. Save the mind in the name of Jesus. Father, we need you. In these last and evil days, we say thank you now. In Jesus' name, amen. And now we're moving into the christening portion of the service. Would you remain standing and receive the priest of this house, the Bishop Samuel Edward Iglehart. He's coming up the far wall aisle. God bless you, saints of God. First of all, let me say hello to everybody. Praise God. We thank God for our being here. Praise God. We heard a very beautiful message this morning from the Elder Hardy. Praise God. I'm, I'm certainly glad that uh, God has fulfilled his promise. Praise God. We can now uh, shout a little bit. I know his mother is happy. His wife is happy. Praise God. And the church family is happy. Yeah. Let's give God some praise in here. Praise God. I, Listen to him talk about the promises of God. I, I, I thought about how good God has been to me. 
Praise God. Can you, can you realize what God has done for you? See, I never don't dare you to go back in your memory bank and remember some of those things when you were down and out. Uh, we praise God, and God had brought you back. Praise God. When you had lost your faith and, 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 and felt like you didn't know your way, but God began to show you the way. Praise God. We have a right to praise him, don't we? Praise God. We have a right to give him the glory. Praise God. Praise God. I've, I've had a tremendous week this week, and uh, I found out I wasn't Superman. I thought I was kind of really strong, but I tell you that, uh, but, but I'm holding on to the promises of God. And he's promised me that if, if I hold on, it's going to be all right. Praise God. And, and I give him the glory, and I, I stand fast on this promise. Praise God. We're blessed uh, today. Uh, to have one of our members who, who uh, wants to uh, christen her baby, Sister Ashley Davidson. Praise God, I'm gonna ask her to come and those that are with her. Praise God, yeah. And she's bringing little Tyree Martin as, as the second, praise God. and. Uh, I believe this is Brother Martin, am I right? God bless you, Brother Martin, and, and bless you, Sister, Sister Davison. Uh, one of the things that uh, uh, is, is utmost, uh, God bless you, this is some of the families here. Brother, Brother Davison, yeah, God bless you. Let's give this, uh, th this family, this is a support group. And, and, and I don't care how, how great you are, you, uh, family, husband and wife, they stand together, but you need support. Yeah. Everybody says support. Yeah. Praise God, you need to have support. We need to have support. Praise God, we're grateful. I'm going to ask uh, someone to read me St. Mark, the 10th chapter, and the 13th through 16th verse. I need that done. I got it. And they, and they brought the, the young children to him that he should touch them. And his disciples rebuked those that brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was, such, he was much displeased and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. And he took them up in his arms and put his hands upon them and then blessed them. God bless you. God bless you. Did you listen to that reading uh, as Jesus rebuked those who would not let children come up? And then after he prayed for them, he took them up in his arms. Now, I'm not in the shape to take them up at all, but I need, well, all right, uh, Brother Keevan is going to take your baby and bring him up in your, oh, okay, Brother Connor, go ahead. Brother Connor, I, I couldn't see with the mask. <laughs> Praise God, yeah. Praise God. <clears throat> And now we pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. Bring me some oil right quick. All right, good. And, and anoint him, anoint this baby right quick. We pray for a little Ty Lee Martin II. We anoint him now in the name of Jesus. Pray God that give him strength. Praise God. And I want to say something to you, saints. This anointing is just like getting a shot. Praise God. God's going to ward off every disease, every sickness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. And God's able to do it. How many of y'all know God's able? Praise God. Sometimes we act like that we don't have 
a, a, a relationship with Christ. When you've got a relationship with Christ, that introduces you to the Father. Praise God. Also access to the Holy Ghost. And you ought to give God some praise right now for being so good to you. And we give him praise in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And he said that whosoever shall be like these children will be able to enter. So you got to learn how to get rid of all that grown folk stuff. Pray God and come in. Said, I'm, able, I'm, I'm trusting you and you are able to do whatever I need you to do. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God and we give him praise and sanctified. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Let's say amen for little Ty Lee. Little Ty Lee, little Ty Lee Martin II. Praise God. I'm going to ask uh, this family to the support group. Praise God. You're here to support these people. Praise God. In their endeavor and whatever they need to do. Praise God. I'm going to suggest to Brother Martin that this not be his last time coming. Praise God. This, this is the wholeness church, and we trust in Jesus Christ. And to the family, know that God is able to do everything but fail. Praise God, and we thank God for all of you, and we pray God bless it upon you now. Pray God, and this young baby shall grow up. Pray God shall be God-fearing, shall be God-trusting, and know that God is able. Pray the name of Jesus Christ. And the wife is going to read to you this dedication and that you can use this and put this up so that it'll be a reminder every time that this baby has been anointed. Oh, God. I feel his spirit down. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. His anointing is real. Praise God. We got a song. He's real. Praise God. I know he's real. Praise God. God bless you, Elder Wofford. Praise Cathedral Church of God in Christ, 5895 Ben Zingelman Road, San Antonio, Texas 78244. Certificate of Dedication. This is to certify that Ty Lee Martin II was born on the fourth day of April in the year of our Lord, 2021. Birthplace San Antonio, Bear County, State of Texas. And he was presented to the Lord in dedication at Praise Cathedral Church of God in Christ, 5895 Ben Zingelman Road in the city of San Antonio and the state of Texas on the 11th day of April in the year of our Lord, 2021. Presented by Tylee Martin Jr., the father, and Ashley Monique Davison, the mother. The service of dedication was performed by Bishop Samuel E. Eigelhart. The family standing before you are in witness, signed by Mary J. Clinkscales, Secretary, Bishop S. E. Eigelhart, the pastor. Give that to uh, Brother Martin. Praise God. And, uh, you know, the, you all are this part of this family. Good to see you. Praise God. And we pray God blesses upon you. Praise God. And we pray God blesses on uh, this little child. I like the way she did it. She didn't even hesitate. Praise God. He had me start crawling or nothing. Praise God. But yet he's active. Boy, you got an active child there. Praise God. He's going to be ready. Praise God. Let's give God the praise. Come on, praise cathedral. Praise God. Let him know we love him. May God bless you. His face be upon you. Our Holy Father, we thank you today for all of these in the support group. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. God bless you. This service here is through and back into the service of, that Ellen Wofford has started. Okay.